Alright, today we have another uh, netcap video for you guys. Um, this is just a simple script for a netcap backdoor. Um, I guess you can say it has persistence, but really the qualifications for a backdoor is a piece of software that allows you um, entry freely to the device. So you can say this has persistence because technically um, I guess it would be classified as persistent, but um, to me it's just a, a proper backdoor. Um, it's a very simple script uh, and it's uh, saved as a batch file so you want to save it as dot bat um, and uh, as far as practicality, practicality goes um, I would say it's about 50-50 on this one uh, because it is a batch script it's gonna be undetectable to most antivirus and stuff like that it's not gonna flag as a virus but um, because it is a batch script it does have some limitations and if you watch my previous videos about uh, the netcat trojan you'll see how to make a shortcut of the batch script and then go to properties on the windows machine and then you can actually change the icon of the batch script to hide it and in theory you could put this let's say in the boot um, config folder and uh, it would start on boot up so the only thing once you do is put this script onto a computer a Windows 10 computer is uh, start it so let's say you have um, a interpreter shell you could start it that way or if you have uh, some other kind of connection to that would that has the ability to start programs any kind of command prompt connection would be able to do that or a shell like that but um we showed you a couple different ways you can get shells on Windows 10 and Windows computers. So, or if you have physical access to the computer, so you could um, also transfer this via like server or uh, USB stick, put it on the computer, start it, and leave, or hide it in the C drive somewhere deep into the computer, or put it in the boot startup folder and use it that way. But like I said, as far as practicality goes, um, I would say it's 50-50 because you do have to start the program after you put it on the target device. But once it's started and running, um, once the batch script's running, it will just keep looping and you'll have uh, access constantly. And I'll show you how that works. Because I'm screen recording, I'm not going to be able to show you the machine I'm attacking. But um, it's the same Windows 10 machine as the other Netcat programs or uh, another, other Netcat videos. And uh, if you need reference, you can just go back to those. So uh, I'm going to show you the script without talking too much more. And so what you would do is um, you would need your local IP address. If you're using this with port forwarding, you'd use your private IP address. And this will work with port forwarding um, if you port forward on your, to your Kali Linux box, the port you're using. So if I was doing this remotely, I would port forward 443 to my Kali Linux box, and here I would use my uh, public IP address. But because um, because that's actually my real public IP address or uh, internal IP address, but because um, we're not doing this with port forwarding, we're going to use our internal IP address. So. Um, if you need to find your internal IP address, all you'd have to do is type ifconfig, and you can see up here 10.2. or 10.0.0.252 is my internal IP address, and that means that this is going to work over the LAN. And like I said, if you wanted to do it over the WLAN, you would have to use port forwarding to your Catalinux box and your public IP address, which you can find by uh, just Googling what's my IP address or going to what's my IP address.com. All right, so there's the script. Um, you would make your batch script on a Windows computer or the target device or have it saved and, and share it via USB or a server or any type of way to get it onto the target device. But once you write the script on the Windows device using Notepad or Note Plus, Plus or whatever your text editor is, um, you just save it as .bat and then uh, you have your backdoor. 
and like I said because it's a batch script it won't be detectable to antivirus so once you have your back back door um, you can like I said you can get at your target device uh, many different ways and then once it's on the target device all you want to do is either double click the batch file icon or um, if you're starting it remotely like via interpreter shell or something you would use uh, either the command prompt shell and hit start and type the name of your batch file or uh, start it another way but once you got the programs up and running and on the target device I'm going to show you uh, what it does so we'll just close this out alright so that's the command that you need to start uh, listening on your end for the back door so once I hit this command NC tack NVLP 443 and that is the port I used when making the back door that's very important make sure you use the same port uh, that you used in making the back door when trying to connect so I'm gonna hit enter and as you can see I got a uh, command prompt shell to the desktop which is where um, the batch script is located. So wherever the batch script is located is where, where you'll come, you'll pop up in as a uh, files. But you can uh, manipulate from here and uh, go to any file. So it'd be like CD. And as you can see, it listed all of the uh, files here on the desktop. Now, if you change a file directory, I'm a little uh, rusty on my command prompt commands um, that, because I haven't done anything in a while. But if you uh, change file directory, you can see all of the files in that by typing dir. But as you can see here, I have a connection. And I'm going to show you the per persistence of this. So uh, I'm going to hit Control C, stop the connection, hit the same thing, and as you can see, I got another connection. Uh, I can do it again. Control C, tab up, NC tac NVLP 443, the same port I used in making it, and bam. So as you can see, as long as the back door is running, you'll constantly have a persistent connection. And you can use this remotely or over the uh, LAN. Um, remember what I said about using remotely, you would have to port forward to your Kali Linux box and use your public IP. That's very important. Uh, remember to save it as a .bat file. And remember, um, you can put it in maybe the boot, uh, the boot config INI file. And it will start on boot up. Or uh, you can start it remotely from a interpreter shell or some other type of shell connection. But once you have it on the target device and start it up, you will constantly be able to just keep getting connections and coming in as well as you want. So you can leave, come back, leave, come back. And it will always work as long as the file is running. That's the only downfall. That's why I said practicality uh, is 50-50. There's benefits of it because it's a batch script. It's not going to be detected by AV, but like I said, there's limitations to it. And... Um, so like I said with practicality it's a 50-50 there's ups and downs with it but I thought it was a fun little script and uh, I decided to share it and hopefully you guys find it interesting too and uh, maybe use it so uh, like I said always be careful with the knowledge we give you here and always have fun see ya